I desire some muffins. Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom Disneyland is growing every Ladies day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. It's time to throw down, y'all. Have you thought about a visit to Disneyland during your vacation? You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. Join the happy people of all ages. Yes, there's more fun at Disneyland in Anaheim. The happiest country on earth. Welcome to Bob Says and Banthas, a podcast about Disneyland, Star Wars, finding magic, and the power of nostalgia. On this episode, we talk about, we don't talk about Bruno, but we do talk about how that song is blowing up. Disneyland brings vaccine mandates to the happiest place on earth, but maybe it's not as bad as you think it is, or, or maybe it is. I don't know. It's really hard to talk about COVID these days. We discuss a blog post about the eight things you should always bring on a Disney trip and the three things you should never bring. Spoiler alert, chainsaws. <laughs> Did not make the list. And in our main segment, we discuss the problems with Disney and how to fix it by exploring an article that was written on themeparktourist.com. My name is Scott Storm, and with me is my brother on the mic, the Jeremy Bullock of this show. Absolute Aaron Wow. Roberts. Jeremy Bullock, the original Boba Fett. Yeah. Not with Tamara the better Morrison, voice. the current Boba Fett. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I do not remember being in this scene that's before, right, that's right. but I will take it. We, uh, lots of changes. That was my emperor. That was not Boba Fett. No. That's good. That's mid Boba Fett. Because it didn't sound anything like Boba Fett. It sounded ne- a lot like the did, Emperor. Did, did, yeah, neither did Tamara Morrison's Boba Fett. That's true. Like any Boba Fett either. We were listening to a little Tamara Morrison. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were listening to Jeremy Bullock. I don't think Jeremy Bullock did the original voice of Boba Fett. I think he was the actor of but Boba Fett. But he didn't Fett. do that. It's got a, like, there's a sharpness to that voice and a little it. bit of like a, it's just there's like an edge to that voice. Yeah, and then Tamara Morrison comes in to re record all that dialogue and it sounds like he's just like hanging out in his pool. Yeah, like he's like, I, I have drinks. What do you want? Like, you want I can anything? make you whatever. If you're cool, you're cool, but hey, I can make you a drink. Uh, what if he doesn't survive? He's no good to me dead. He's not uh, good. I mean, we have Bacardi. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, but, welcome to episode 91. 91, we made it into the into the 90s. That's right. Let's, let's give the banter. We just did 20 minutes on pinball. Oh, my gosh. Could have done a lot more. Let me give we're the quick summary. We're both pinball fans, it turns out. Yeah, I didn't realize it. we were I didn't both know pinball that either. Fans. You didn't but, know that I'd made a little film about pinball. I didn't. I would oh, love to see it sometime. I love it. So the quick, so should we do the quick summary for yes. our listeners here? The quick summary is this. Over the weekend, uh, my neighbors were moving. Yeah. And they put out on their front, uh, dr- on the driveway, like a kid's pinball table. Yeah, give me a, a yay by yay by, with your uh, hands. I would say it's probably like 35 inches by, you know, four feet tall, something okay. like that. Yeah. So let's call it a 65%, I don't know, 45% size pinball machine. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. You turn it on? You plug it in and turn it on? Turn, plugged it in, oh, turned fun. it on. Mechanical pinball machine. They're just like, we don't want to move this. And so uh, we we rescued it. We're my wife. To, my wife. moving to Ohio. They haven't even gotten Pirates of the Caribbean yet. Yeah. Like, it's coming out next year. It's coming out next year. They just, they, in fact, they're really excited. They're for super this, excited, this but we can't bring this pinball machine in there. So we brought it into the garage. We got My wife rescued it. She brought nice. it into the garage. She's who like, rescued who, though, Scott? The pinball machine rescued That's the true. family. Aww. Yeah. And so we got it set up and we were playing pinball. My kids had never played pinball before. And so now they were exposed to pinball. And this, and I love pinball. Yeah, me too. Like, uh, have always loved pinball, yeah. have always wanted to own a pinball table. And uh, and now this has sent me down a rabbit hole of researching pinball machines, how to afford a pinball machine. Now I, and I've, I told you this morning, now I've fallen into this thing about building a virtual pinball machine yep. to simulate all the tables that I used to love playing when I was You're going to have to get on the Patreon to get constant updates on that, on that progress. Oh, yeah. Maybe fantastic. we should build it over on the Patreon. We should. Because you're going to build one now, too. Uh, yeah. This is going to be great. I hope I talk to Teresa before she hears this episode. I think uh, I probably uh, when, will. When I talked to, to Megan about it, she was like... This is like your new thing because like it, <laughs> yeah. she goes because like it was the no, one it was the new, one wheel in November that's and now still it's a thing. This. It can't be the, a new. That's thing. what I said. It's I go like a new thing. It's I said I still love the one wheel. Oh, now yeah. I'm just. I'm not, I, she said. She goes. Why am I not surprised that you've always wanted to have a pinball machine? <laughs> and I go. Why well, have? And she's like. Yeah, I know. But like that doesn't surprise me that you've always wanted yeah. to have a pinball machine. Yeah, my my kids say that to me as a, as an argument for things that they want. Like oh, I've always wanted this. I'm like you're eight. Well, that's why I said to her, I go, no, 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 like, like I have really always, well, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to convince her, like, no, I have it always wanted sense. this. It makes sense. You don't it understand. It just come up this it's week. almost like destiny. 
It is almost like destiny. Yeah. So well, get over in the yeah. Patreon and check that out. We are in episode 91. We're going to do some news and then we're going to talk about uh, a really interesting article came out yeah. uh, on just kind of the state of the state of the Disney it was mostly theme park experience, right, I think. Right. And so we're going to look at some of the critiques of that article and see if they, if we think they're valid and they have solutions they in have, there. They have suggested solutions, whether Which we agree like with them or not. a really great way to write an article. Instead of just like saying, here are the problems. Here are the problems. They, they offered some solutions. Yeah. So I think that'll be good. Yeah. So what, what do you say we just get? Uh, let's noodle in the, the noodle in the use. Uh, let's noodle in that use. It's time for news. Oh. Trio. Remain seated, please. The new segment uh, next year is going to be 18 minutes long. Did you listen to Bob Sleds and Bantha? He has mostly one long news song. All they, it's like they just keep adding yeah. different things to their news jingle. <laughs> and that's what this show became. There is no news, but that song's 14 minutes. It's always been around 90 minutes, yeah. but now 85 of those minutes is a news jingle. <laughs> I would love that. If that's our claim, like world's longest news jingle. Like you listen to it on Tuesday and you wrap that up on Thursday. It's People fun. just listen to it in parts yeah. on their commute. Yeah, what part are you yeah. at? <laughs> uh, all right. We're back and we're ready to talk about your news items. What do you got? Well, let's talk about yeah. the number one song in the U.S. Right. I just had this conversation with Penelope uh, like t- yesterday, walk into the park. You did? Yeah. Well, uh, what was that conversation? Well, the question I asked her was, uh, the song's blowing up. Was it like, is this, that song is not the song let it go. is, uh, we don't talk about Bruno Correct, from, from Encanto. Encanto and it's definitely not let it go. It, it's, it's not of that level of like pop melody thing, Yes, but it's blowing up feels like as big, or at least it's got yeah. this groundswell yeah. to it. So I was asking her like, is the song really that good or is there something else going on is it about the character that's making the song so we just had that little conversation well and what were her thoughts on that of course this has reached this has reached number one of the billboard hot 100 charts yeah and i think the interesting thing about this is it is happening two months after the movie was released. totally yeah uh you know obviously due in huge part the fact that it's been available on disney plus Plus, since, since uh december 24th but yeah, what what was what was her thought on that? Like, does she think that it is as good as Let It Go? No, I don't think she thinks it's as poppy as Let It Go. She did say that she really does like the song, but the from what I'm gathering, the song is bigger than just the 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 melody and the words to the song. Okay, that, that character is attractive. the The video, the the that that part of the movie has a lot of fun yeah, that stuff song that, in it. Yeah, I that, think the, that. the shapeshifter one, Cam- Camillo, Camillo, or whatever that name is, yeah. is in there. So it, it really is an uh, is an aggregate of the stuff that's blowing up online. It is a good song. The character Bruno is very likable, or has sort of an underdoggy kind of like we all kind of feel like Bruno at at some point in time. I think so. But, well, let me yeah. ask you a question. Do you think that that's a result of the scene in the movie, because again, this is the scene in the movie is not able, you're not able to view that on Spotify. So you're going to listen to it on Spotify, right. Apple music, et cetera. And so do you think it's people watched? I mean, it, it's gotta be more than the, the, the visuals. That song yeah. is crazy catchy. Yeah. And it is, uh, do you really think so? I think so. Okay. I, I mean, I, uh, again, this was written by Lin Manuel Miranda, and I. Uh, what is up with that guy? He's a genius. I he guess is so. like a musical genius. This song is so catchy. Yeah, uh, it it the the beat behind it, and the way it's telling a story, and the way all the characters are talking about this character who, who we have not seen. So there's like these there's the, the the layers of this song, in addition to the melody and the beat, is is fantastic. Yeah, and it's just. Yeah, it's like it's in, like an earworm, and it's I just, can see why it's, yeah, it's as just popular blown as it is. I just yeah, I don't I don't think it doesn't it doesn't strike you. No, it does. I just I think that it's I think it's bigger than the actual words. Where where I don't know I just and, and it's not like a happy premise that you don't talk about somebody in your family. So it's I think it's interesting to me that like it's not a super Disney song. It, no, it's, it's not. Got, it's got a uh, sort of a. I don't want to say dark, but I don't know. I just think it hits on a lot of levels I, from the visuals, from the message, from the it's fun to say we don't talk about Bruno. That's uh, not like a normal song thing. So no, there's a great in, there's great memeable. interviews with uh, Lin Manuel Miranda about him writing that really? song. Yeah, about how that character was not originally named Bruno. Yeah, and he could not figure out how to write a song based on that name, and so they came back to him and said, "Here's a list of na- other names that you could use." And the idea of like Bruno, no, no, like yeah, just popped in so his good. head. And yeah. so he wrote the song around that. And then he he talks about, and this is something I didn't pick up until after I had 
uh, read this interview is he talks about how the song is everybody talking about how Bruno is, uh, you know, how, how he, uh, he brings bad news. Yeah. But all the bad news he is bringing is obvious things to anybody in those situations. Yeah. Like a woman whose power is to create weather. And when she gets nervous, it causes rain and it rains on her wedding day. Like that's a very obvious thing. Right, She's yeah. nervous on her wedding day or that a fish is going to die the next day because goldfish die. Like he's making very obvious predictions that, that the cast is taking as very serious, but there's like such a lightheartedness. Like yeah. there's such an irony, I guess, uh, in them being so nervous about his soothsaying abilities when what he is foretelling is just very obvious stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I think like, as like you said, just many layers. To, it does. To and it, I just think it's, I don't know if this is the first time it's happened in sort of Disney Disney movie history, but it's just very. It is very odd what you said at the beginning of this. this is the first I was like we started talking about it. I'm not saying, but then it seems like everybody started talking about it. And I'm not yeah, trying. To, well, we're not saying that I'm we caused saying, that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying no. it's coincidental. But it's there an is, amazing coincidence. It's an amazing coincidence. But there is something weird that this movie went to theaters and it felt like the the. The, the consensus around it was like, yeah, I'll see it. I don't know. I, I didn't see it. I don't know. Maybe I did. I don't remember. And then it went to Disney Plus, and all of a sudden, this thing has got it's, it's, it's a train up. right it's now. It's crazy. Yeah. I, it's a really good movie. And I think it's so interesting. You mentioned Let It Go. Uh, you know, even Let It Go didn't chart like this. Uh, the the last song. There's only been one other song that Disney has gotten in the the number one spot on the billboard wow and that was a whole new world from Aladdin. okay yeah so let it go didn't even reach this level and yet i remember how much that song took over social media absolutely and, and everywhere uh, by award all shows account, it was just everywhere it was everywhere and and that was happening with the movie and this is like happening after the movie which i just find really fascinating it is fascinating yeah, it is a sleeper hit. I just want to be the first one to make the joke that we don't talk about, we don't talk about Bruno. That's for when we're all tired of, uh, you know, it's like when you say, let it go, you're really saying, dude, like, let, dude it let it go. Please. We don't talk about, we don't talk about, Bruno. we don't talk about, we don't talk about Bruno. Did you just make that joke or are you setting that joke up for later? Uh, no, I just made it. I want to be the first to get it out on the internet. And it's just a coincidence when people start saying that. Yeah, yeah. you remember where you hear it. You, you heard That's it right. here first. You folks. heard it here first. So uh, we're going to stop talking about Bruno. Okay. And we're going to start talking about vaccine mandates Whoa, at what a Disneyland. Transition. Do you like that segue? Yeah. You ruin the segue when you call it out. You do. But I don't mind that you did. We don't talk about va- vax mandates. Oh, but we're going to. Okay, let's we're talk it. about it. Uh, it sounds like Disneyland has negotiated with the Local 50, I believe is what it yeah. is. Uh, so Local 50, the union that represents Disneyland cast members, uh, posted that that there is a deadline for all employees, all cast members, to be vaccinated by April 11th to mm-hmm. have verification of vaccines. By April 11th. By April 11th. I thought that was already the case, though. I thought cast members already had to be vaccinated. There was a lot of discussion about that, and they've been in conversations oh, gotcha. about requiring vaccines. Now, again, this is Local 50, which represents a large amount of cast members. I think what we were talking about before was uh, was performers and, oh, equi- yeah. and equity actors right. and, and the vaccine requirements for, I think, Walt Disney World. I think that is correct. I, yeah, I don't know. Our, our our listeners could take a lot of different approaches on what they feel. Oh, yeah. There's like no way to as, talk about this there's no in, way. in a great way. Right. So employer-required vaccine mandates are going to hit listeners on a bunch of different levels. Yeah. This is where I think the potential silver lining of this story is is that when the spokesperson for Local 50 was talking about this, I think they posted it on Facebook, they said that they talked about th- that the union representatives were requesting that not only does Disney require the cast members to all be vaccinated, but that Disney require a vaccine requirement for all guests that are attending the park. Mm. And Disney was very, very strong. And the quote here from... uh The shop steward, Chris Shively, said Disney had no intent to require guests to show proof of vaccinations or a negative test. They have specifically communicated that to us. So that's fascinating. That's it is fascinating. Crazy to me, considering Universal's uh, doesn't feel like they want to be, but they're sort of on the I mean, they're on the not enforcement, but they're checking negative tests and vaccination. Right. The you know, a lot of the museums and stuff in L.A., they're on the very serious level of that restaurants. I've I've been in downtown L.A. and been in restaurants pretty 
pretty hit or miss on the enforcement of that. Right. But you don't know. You don't. You never know when you're going to be able to eat it inside. When we're going to be eating, eat inside as right. a family. What they're saying is, listen, we are expecting people to self attest. Yeah. That they are in compliance with whatever the requirements are. So yeah. if you are vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask around other people. Right. And if you are not vaccinated, then you should be wearing a mask. And, and then the third category, if you're Gavin Newsom. If you're Gavin Newsom, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> right. And uh, and then. It's, that was a joke. We haven't lost listeners due to Gavin Newsom in almost a year. Well, I think, we, uh, well, I think, I think there that's hasn't unfair. been anything worth reporting about Gavin Newsom yeah. and his ridiculousness uh, in about a year. But what do you know? Yeah. I think that Gavin Newsom, you're going to hate this comment. I, think, I can't wait. I think that Gavin Newsom, like when I see a picture taken of him candidly, when he's not, when he, when he, when he t- has his picture taken as a politician, yeah. he looks, you know. A little like I don't know if I'm tr- I trust this guy when he has it because he looks like he, he should he belongs in Madame Tussauds is that what you mean just like, like he yeah looks he looks like a he, wax figure <laughs> he looks a little you know whatever but when you see just a casual he looks like picture, he could be in Westworld that if you were basically right. to remove his face you would see the mechanical oh, they got them so real yeah, exactly. yeah. okay all right, I'm, I'm with you keep okay. going not that I'm saying that when you see just a casual picture taken of him he kind of looks like a nice guy <laughs> like he just he just has a real like you know he's got a little storm to him he's got shiny eyes whoa, and, whoa, whoa. are you comparing Yes. California's governor, Gavin Newsom. I am a little bit. To me? Kind of has a sparkle and a shine to him. There's just kind of like a... Well, yeah, the shine a, is all the Botox he's had shot uh, An approachable, face. like an approachable sparkle is what I would say. Both Scott Storm and Gavin Newsom have an approachable sparkle in casual photography. And I just thought you should know that. I, I told you you're going to hate it. Look at the, his casual photography. You're like, that guy, that guy's kind of cool. Are you trying to suggest yeah. that Gavin Newsom has casual candid photos of him taken of him where he doesn't realize he's being photographed probably not i mean in, in, in his rams luxury seats or whatever in his uh, box with magic johnson yeah right like when he took the photo with <laughs> magic johnson to be posted on instagram yeah. that one well then there's ones with long len- long lenses shot right. of him yeah that's true you want to get off the uh hey i think scott storm and gavin newsom have some things in common new section on to the next story listen next story Wow, we haven't really had a COVID segment in a I'm long time. About that for a while. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's talk about a, a article that came out that I thought we could discuss. Oh, you can yeah. Tell me what you think? Is this the article? No, no, no. There was oh. a. Uh, this is this is the penultimate article. Okay. And this article is. Uh, it was on Yahoo News, and it said, "I'm a travel planner who's been oh. to Disney World over forty times." Weird flex. Here okay. are eighty things I always pack and three things I never bring. Eight or eighty? Eight, eight. Sorry, Ooh. did I say eighty? Yeah, you might overpack there a little bit. All right. Here's eighty things. We're First gonna I do start this in my for the garage. next three I go hours. with my Christmas tree saw. <laughs> I have a 3D printer. I have my, my the so that I have them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Eight things. What is this travel planner? Eight things they bring, and three. I gotta say though, there's. I have my list of things I don't bring is is lengthy. It's way more than three. I leave a lot of stuff home. Yeah. Yeah. Like your 3D printer. I do. I leave both of those home. Your I don't bring blower. my one wheel all the time. My leaf blower. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't bring a lot of my organizers. A lot of my nuts and bolts of bring, organizers. Oh yeah. I don't bring those. Do you bring your Trapper Keeper, though? I your do, old Trapper course. Keeper, your middle school Trapper Keeper. How am I going to sketch? Right. Yeah. yeah. That, well, that makes sense. That I got to draw sense. mazes. I got to draw mazes on graph paper. You, just in case. Yeah. Well, for people to solve in line, I'm like, hey, I drew this, I drew this spaceship maze. You want to try to get through it? Hey, family of six. <laughs> would you like to try to solve my maze that I just <laughs> yeah, drew? I just drew, it. I just drew it on graph paper in my Trapper Keeper. If you could not push on my puffy stickers, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. You're flattening out my kitty. <laughs> And don't scratch the scratch and sniff. Don't. Unless you make the you're smell gonna, go away. You're going to use it all up. You're going to use it all up. I don't like you enough to use. let you use up grape. Don't be crazy. Uh-uh. Just solve the maze. No, just. <laughs> all right. So here here are some things that uh, Marvelous Mouse Travels. Oh, fun. Specializes in Disney destinations. Wrote about the things that she brings. All right. Let me hear On it. a trip. I'm go agree, disagree. It says, if you spend any time in the Orlando area, you know it will rain. So you should always bring a poncho. Uh, now you don't have any experience with this. I don't have any experience. So I'm just going to rate her list based on California advice. That's a no go. It's a no go for you. Never, bring, never a bring a poncho for yep, you. Yep, they sell them in the park, and you're not going to need it. Well, see, I'm going to say uh, I think this is a good idea mm. because and you're going to carry it around with you. You're putting that in your day bag. Yeah, you on fold, the you off fold chance it up. it's going to rain in you California. You a poncho and fold that thing up. It comes with its own pocket. Okay, you can stash that in a bag. Four of them. Well, yeah, it certainly beats. It certainly beats spending the 
what, $15, $20 for a poncho when they come out when it rains. Now, again, Disneyland, I don't think you bring a poncho. That's what I'm Disneyland. saying. I'm only rating this list based on Disneyland. No, okay. So Disneyland, no go for me in Disneyland. They, if, yeah. I mean, you're, you're better off just finding some shelter and sitting in there or just being wet. Just, yeah, just, just It'll be okay for you to Well, be it's wet. raining in LA. What well, a what fun experience. Know? Yeah, exactly. This never happens. Yeah. This is fun. In Walt Disney World, though, guaranteed. It's, so, yeah, ponchos right. a go. All you right, should next. Know that next. Uh, you're going to want a small but roomy bag for yeah. the parks. Uh, I think that that seems very obvious. I can't imagine anybody. Is this bag going in another bag? Is this no, a... this is just a, a bag. Okay. A, uh, a crossbody bag, for example, or a small backpack, purse, or fanny pack. Let me ask you a question. Mm. Or let me just make a statement. Okay. I'd prefer it in the form of a question. All right. I'll ask it this question. If you do not bring a bag with you when you are touring yeah. for either yourself or on behalf of your whole family, if you don't do that in Disneyland or Disney World, are you a sociopath? <laughs> I mean, you you have won you have won the planning Olympics, national, regional, international. If you can figure out how to not be from the area, so you're yep. not just in there for a, uh-huh. a pop in. If you have a family of four or five and you figure out how to do a, d- a day at Disneyland, yep. and nobody needs extra baggage. You're my hero. Yeah, you're amazing. You're completely a sociopath, that, but you're, you're also wearing, my hero. Or you're just wearing so many layers of clothing, yeah. that you look like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. Yeah, right. I would I would love. It's my dream. It is my dream to have have a no backpack day. There's no way you can do that you can't you You can't can't do it the best you can do do is is locker stuff like you can nail the lockers that's about it or you're wearing gigantic early 2000s cargo shorts and everything goes in them yeah and you probably want to zip time just for if you go on in credit coaster yeah just to be safe all right well you gotta bring a bag it's a guarantee you have to bring a bag uh and bag selection is very important that's all i'll say we could do a whole episode on bags. You selection. really could. I'm not sure about a crossbody bag unless it unclips and is able to clip back in very easy or Velcro or something because you got to do this thing now, all the time. Now, I carried a crossbody bag for a long time. Me too. I was a big believer in the crossbody. I loved it too. A crossbody backpack. I mm-hmm. carried that for a long time, like a single sling backpack. Mm-hmm. And I same, believed same. in that for theme park touring, but I don't. I would not do that anymore. That's I wouldn't too either. much weight on one shoulder for the day. It is, and I don't like having to lift it up over yes. my head like that. Yep. And it might have a little cell phone thing right here, and I felt cool about that because I like sometimes I'd press it like it was a walkie-talkie. Oh, and I'd nice. be like, "Oh, we're, all, we're all clear. Yeah. yeah, we're all clear. We're gonna let the let Robin's family through. They're gonna come into the back door. You're gonna let them on. They're like, nobody can. No one. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody can hear you. You're not gonna get on. Pirates. Who are you talking to? Just, you're just you're just holding onto the cell phone pocket. Clicking my a cell phone. Clicking my nose. My Nokia Razor phone. Oh, yeah, we're going to let this family through. <laughs> Does that work? No. I feel cool, though. I feel really cool. Yeah, I don't do the crossbody. What's the next item on this list? Travel size sunscreen and hand sanitizer to carry around the park. What do you think about that? I think you're going to. I, I don't think you're going to liberally apply that as you think you are. And there's sanitizer all. I don't know. Disneyland does a pretty good job with the sanitizer things. I but feel yeah. like if I, I mean, if I'm bringing with a family, I'll probably bring some sunscreen. Of course. Yeah. You got to lather your kids up with sunscreen mm-hmm. because they'll burn up like bacon otherwise. Sure. Right. Uh, but if I was just going by myself, I just throw a hat on. I'm okay. Yeah. Right. Stay out of the sun. Stay out of the sun. We probably always say we're people of the shade when we're in Disneyland. That's what we yeah. say. And we yeah. move to shady spots. Yeah, You follow the shade. If That's we're going to stop, do. somebody needs to tie a shoe. Get Next into the shady shape. stop. That's right. That's right. Disney gear and mini ears are non-negotiable items. Let me see what this person says here. It says it's not a Disney trip without a, the quintessential Mickey or mini ears. But at this point, I have plenty to choose from oh. based on different seasons, holidays, and moods. Wow. And so I pack those with me. And I also pack many Disney t-shirts for every par- uh, trip of the park. And also make sure to have Disney jewelry. That's, Basically, it sounds like what this uh, woman is saying is, I wear clothes when I go to a Disney park. Disney clothes. I don't know. The, the, the hats and things like that, I think that's sort of a... I could make an argument that that's not... Would you bring fun. Disney ears with you? I keep, my kids are... Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Like, sometimes it's an ear trip. Sometimes they know that if they say they want to bring ears, but then they forget them, they get new ears in the park. So do that's a whole thing. you think maybe this is a gender thing? Because I could think be. as a man, I would never bring ears that I bought at another trip into the park. And I think when we were, when I was going to Disneyland growing up in the eighties, yeah. that was not like, there weren't so many different types of ears. Right. Like that right. wasn't a thing. That's yeah. a, that's a not new thing, but it's a fairly recent in the last 15, 20 years sure. of, of having so many ears to choose from right. and, and stuff like that. So that would me would not make my eight essentials unless I had like a free spot. So again, I, I would imagine if you had a headband with ears, I can understand bringing that in cause you don't need necessarily need to buy that. If I was to so you have, have a migraine in the hotel later, just press it on your press temple on your, just all day long. Squeezing into your brain. Yeah. Uh, but the they make the ears, they make the baseball cap that have the ears yeah, on them, uh-huh. yep. which I really love. I don't yeah. own one, but I would I like to own one. If I owned one of those, I would absolutely bring that because yeah. that'd be my ball cap that I would wear then. 
And I'm not going to buy another I set of I always ears just wear the groom ears top hat. No matter what? Yeah. And then people are like, oh, you got married. Yeah. A while ago, but, you know. First you want to buy me a dinner? First trip to Disneyland. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you'll need your phone a lot at uh, Disney Park. So portable chargers yeah. are a lifesaver. Now, this goes back to something we talked about well over a year ago. Okay. Whether or not you bring your own USB battery backup, yeah. portable charger, or you do what I do. Which is you bring a surge protector. You bring a power, a power strip, strip into the park. That's right. Now, you made a lot of fun of, of me, but um, I, I in my hand, I'm holding right now uh, the power strip that I recommend, which is a cube-based power strip. Yep. With which USB allows you, built into it from Anchor. It's got three USBs built into it and uh, three. Where do you plug this thing in? There's outlets in Disneyland, man. Yeah. You can, find, cool. you can find the outlets and you can plug them in. And you're like, hey, Dude, like when there's some free of this power juice. like that, I always wonder about that. I'm like, why are people not bringing in like pinball machines or bring things my to hook in? One wheel and I charge, I charge up my one up wheel right too? there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I've never brought a power cord in. We do bring, uh, do you bring portable, battery backups. We do bring battery checks. I think we're most guilty of the like, we'll just dim your screen. You get 32% left. It's noon. Mm, what yeah. are we going to do? I have one of those uh, solar battery backups oh, that I would bring. I hook that on my back of my backpack and I can charge it while I'm walking around. That's nice. another good thing. That So, yeah, I think a battery backup makes a lot of sense. Or you just that uh, one part in uh, Mr. Toad's uh, with the train. You just hold the, hold the solar up to that. And yeah, just, instant like, charge. just let me ride through it again. Yeah. And just hold that okay. up. Okay. Uh, super comfortable and waterproof shoes. What do you think about waterproof shoes? Would you bring those? No, because a uh, little known fact, your feet sweat more in waterproof shoes. They're not as airy. So I would, I would actually say that that is... Not a great idea. I would change this. I would say don't bring waterproof shoes, but do bring flip flops and store flip flops. People, in your bag. yeah, and people in at Disneyland California, they go flip flops all day. You'll see people in the nail. Now that's crazy. Public. I think so too. But you, you don't see do it that. all the time. Well, that's wrong. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's like morally wrong. Right. To you wear see somebody that has no long. backpack and is wearing flip flops. You're like, I, we can probably just call call security. <laughs> call security that's what I right say. now. Call Get one security. of the people in the, with the nice shirts and the straw hats. We have need them, them over. Have them go escort this person. <laughs> At least talk to them. Just bring them off property. <laughs> do that. Do that interrogation elsewhere. Now here's an interesting one. Okay. Uh, she says, "I always pack stamps so so we can send postcards from the Magic Kingdom." That's cute, but that's a no go. If only eight items are making the list. I would bring goldfish crackers and dried freeze dried apples before stamps. before you bring stamps. <laughs> stamps does not make my list. I'm sorry, that's too cute to be a real tip. You really bring stamps every time into the park. Maybe she does. I've never done it. These are eight things that I always bring. One of them is always have stamps. Always bring stamps. The postage is always changing though. I'm never sure what's going on. Always bringing stamps. It's cool. It's a cute thing. I feel like that was in like a. a that's a cute n- thing. That's a blogger thing that you would put on there. Right? Totally a blogger yeah. thing. I feel like that was a narrative way of saying like, hey, did you know you could uh, mail? You could mail stuff from, from, from Main Street. Yeah, I feel like that tip exists to point out that fact now what i would say is that if i was to send like a christmas card out to everybody like sure. if i was to do a family 150, christmas card 150 i would bring 150 envelopes, envelopes yeah. and send them from main street because they do get the little stamp they of do main street. Like, hey, are you gonna cute. be much longer yep hey why don't you just wait okay i paid just as much as you did to be here <laughs> how many envelopes do you have I'm sending it to everyone. Everyone. Everybody at work, all my, my friends, my family, they're all getting a Main Street one. Anybody I'm going to be here a while. subscribed to my newsletter. It would be quicker if you just gave me the stamp. <laughs> just let me stamp them right here. We just gave oh, yeah, Bob yeah, Chapek oh, a great oh, idea. So in this scenario, you have not pre-stamped your envelopes. You're actually <laughs> no, you're peeling at, the stamps you're off. You're at the mailbox in Disneyland with 150 envelopes. In my mind, for some reason, they're green. And yeah. you're just licking. And, and I was going to say, they're not even like decal stamps. You oh, have, no. to have to lick you're them. You're licking and everyone. There's a bunch of people. Yeah. You're Bob, like, hey, if you want this to go faster, you can lick a couple stamps for me. Yeah. Bob Chapek's like, huh, we could upcharge. I could sell the stamp thing. I just gave him tons of ideas. You totally did. You know, he was in the park walking around Disneyland the other day. Yeah. Just walking around by himself. Not that that's very newsworthy, but at the same time, you're like, it's cool, though. I wonder if he got accosted. I wonder if people are like, hey, I paid for that Lightning Lane Plus, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what that's like. I do. I, I hope it's like. good. I hope people are encouraging. And I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't know who he is, maybe. You think you just think it's like a football player in a suit yeah. that's walking around? Yeah. Why is the guy from Back to the Future here? Strickland. Why? Is- <laughs> you're a slacker. Yeah. You're a slacker for waiting. In, I hope that went well for him. Waiting in the standby line. I, first of all, I think that's awesome that he was walking around in the park, and I hope that went well for him. I hope so, too. Yeah. I, we're still in this. Yeah, uh, we are. I'm loving this list. I never pack dress clothes for a Disney vacation. Of course you wouldn't. Well, I don't think things... Dress you, clothes? I don't think things... Oh, are, are we on the three that you never bring? That's right. Okay. We so, transitioned from the eight uh, into yeah, the Yeah, that's three. right. That's okay. right. So don't bring dress clothes on a Disney vacation. Yeah, I agree. That never makes have. sense. Why sure. would you? 
Oh, you're going I mean, to unless you're going to Club 33. Yeah, if you're going to Club like 33, then you got to yeah, show a little respect. Yeah, okay. you gotta at least cover your feet. What else would you never bring? You I never bring a chainsaw. Just you don't? No, I never have. I never probably you never, never will. Never once brought a chainsaw. <laughs> never. There was that guy that brought a hatchet to Tom Sawyer's Island. Remember that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So he was ready. Yeah, he was ready. But you're not. You never bring. He could have used this list. That's right. Don't, don't ever bring, don't bring a, hatchet. a hatchet. You probably won't need it. You don't need to bring your own pool towels or life jacket if you're staying on property. <laughs> yeah. Who is packing up pool towels and life jackets before they go on a vacation to a hotel? <laughs> yeah. Maybe if your kids need a life jacket. My clients often ask me if they need to bring life jackets or towels for their children to enjoy the hotel pools. What person has ever asked a travel agent whether or not they need to bring is a it, life jacket for a hotel? BYOJ or what, what's the situation with a life jacket? Hey, I just need to know whether or not I got to pack this life jacket. <laughs> We've got plenty. I can pack them. I just I would rather not if I didn't have I just to. Need to. I just need to understand. Like, yeah, is a white? Should I do the white water one with the little like head protector? With the head protector. <laughs> Also, Jason does tell a story of uh, his youngest when they were, I think, at the Hojo's in Disneyland right there. And one of his kids. Jason, Jason, yeah, one of your old co-hosts. Yeah, my Again, old, there may be listeners that have no idea who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Jason, old co-host with me on Dole Ups and Dark Rides. And their youngest uh, just ran and belly flopped into a pool and does not know how to swim. And I guess had to rescue uh, their kid. I think it was a spa. And ever since then, he, he always packed checks, a life jacket. He packs a life jacket, yeah. yeah. Or checks with the hotel. <laughs> Do you guys have them? Do you have them? Is just something I can rent? Do they come with the room? Is it hanging on the when I get into my hotel room? Luckily, all Disney resorts provide towels and life jackets. They sure do. So you can save the space in your suitcase and leave them at home. Towels, yeah, life jackets and wristbands for the pool area. We had a competition in our household to see who could keep their green wristband on. Who the won? longest Kennedy won. Her Good for her. Just Did she still off, have on? Uh, oh. Just came off like two days ago. Good for her. We Way went go, in Ken. November. Oh. Just repping that. Repping That's that, a uh, lot. That stay. It was an expensive trip. I'm glad you I know. Got, you're yeah. like, <laughs> just for as long as you get to like, yeah. hey, this is California. This is uh, Grand California. Yeah. This is Grand California. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just so you know, I stayed there. I stayed there. Uh, the last one is it's yeah. tempting to pack all your own snacks, but it's easier to stock up when you arrive. This says it's nice to have a few quick snacks on hand in the hotel room or in your park bag, but don't waste space in your suitcase. You can have groceries delivered to your Disney resort. Oh, well, I never have had groceries delivered to my. No, you probably, but you probably stop off at a Vons or a Ralph's, right, to go pick up, uh, pick up some. Usually snacks. before, usually that stuff's done because uh, our car ride snacks become our in park snacks, and we're not big snackers in the parks. My kids don't like to slow down. What's your they, best they... car ride snack? Beef jerky. Yeah, yeah. Second best, because I agree with you. Second best. Um, that we bring with us. Uh, I like uh, like a uh, Gordetto's mix. I like the all rye chips Gordetto's mix. Oh, people, really? People know what's out huh. there. A little crunchy. I'm really a big fan of the Fritos chili twists. I know that. The twists yeah. seem like they tear up your mouth. Uh, not as bad as regular Fritos. Fritos okay. tear. No, they're not, well, they're not doing any more damage than, say, a bugle would. Right. Yeah. Uh, or you Captain the, Crunch, for that That's matter. what I'm talking about. You ever yeah. do a barbecue Frito? Remember that you said barbecue-flavored Fritos? I don't think I've ever had a barbecue mm. Frito. All right. We should, have, we should get some Fritos on this show. We always have a box of cheer. We should. Yeah. We have ones, have we not? Fritos? Yeah. Chili cheese? I think we have had chili cheese Fritos on this yeah. show. Always a box of Cheerios, always beef jerky, uh, and my kids really like, uh, you buy these in the park, they really like the Disney freeze-dried apples that you can get in the park. Oh, yeah, okay. They used to come in a bag, and then there were three inner bags inside the big bag yeah. that had the freeze-dried apples. I really liked those freeze-dried apples. Those are pretty good. Yeah. I, I like a- I like a good apple chip. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, really, I really like a good apple chip. Me too. Yeah. Great. Great All segment right. from Mouse uh, Marvelous. From whoever it was that wrote that. Great Way to stuff. go. Great stuff. I think. Hey, are we going to talk about the listicle that you uh, that you have to to share? Which one is that? The one about uh, the state of Disney. Why don't you say something? I'm sick of saying things, Aaron. Okay, here's the thing. I say things all the time. You do. You say quite a lot, and I listen to almost all of it. It's cookie time. That's what I want to say. Oh man. Yes, it's cookie time. Oh, what time is it? It's got storm. Oh yes, it's cookie time. Oh, what time is it? It's got storm. Oh, yes, it's cookie time. Are there any words to the song? No, there isn't. That's okay. We like the ones you came up with. Thank you for the cookie. <laughs> you go with the Snicker D, and that's just another one. That's not a peanut butter. That's not a peanut butter. That's a, a, Snicker, a Snickerdoodle. We talked at the uh, front of the show. By the way, are you going to be eating on the microphone? I had a conversation with my class the other day, and I said, Aaron and I are in this constant struggle mm-hmm. because he thinks it's fun 
to have like mouth sounds on the show. Mm-hmm. And I insist people are repulsed by it. And we lose listeners when we have mouth sounds on the show. The point is to repulse people. No, it's not. The point is to keep listenership high mm-hmm. and and grow it. Mm-hmm. That's the point. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> There was an article that came out from uh, ThemeParkTourist.com, and it was a discussion about sort of the changes that Disney has made and how it's at tension with the guest experience. I think the interesting thing, uh, you know, about the article is two things. One, they're they're definitely just putting a a marker in that this is a unique time for for Disneyland. This one is specifically about Walt Disney World, but I think it could be applied to Disneyland. Oh, yeah. We're in a transitional time. There's definitely something different, different. Going on with the Dis- Disney company, and I'll share my thoughts on what I what I think that is. Um, maybe before we get started, I will ask you a question and say if you agree or disagree. And then they kind of go through I don't know four points of of sort of things that that guests are really frustrated about, yeah. and offer some solutions. That's the second thing I find uh, very interesting about this article is that that they have some solutions to it. Yeah, and I don't know that I agree with all their problems anyway. That we'll get to. But the way I read it and the way I've been thinking about it is this. And so I would love to hear, Scott Storm, your thoughts on this sort of idea that that for a long time, Disney, the the genesis of Disneyland was sort of like, um, you know, fairs and carnivals are kind of, you know, rougher places. Grody. (laughs) Grody, yeah. They're they're totally grody places. And Disneyland's not going to be that way. It's going to be clean. People are going to be clean cut and whatever you think about that. That was sort of the genesis of this type of amusement. The word amusement park did not conjure up images of Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah, it felt more like a carnival. It felt had a more carny type of thing. And so I think there was this, like, can we get money? Can we get people to come to this thing? Do people even understand this? Are people going to think it's weird that we have, like, a jungle boat in the middle of our park? And so for it felt like for a lot of time, like, that Disney was focused on pleasing the guests, creating magic, sure. understanding yeah. that these are kind of once-in-a-lifetime vacations for a lot of people. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they were like, we, we want you to come. We want, we want to get you here. We have annual passes. We have all these things, you know. Uh, and then at some point in time, it, it, it seems like to me in the last 10 years, they've, they've switched to like, we have, we've got enough. We have plenty. We have more than enough people showing up to this. Yeah. Thing. Like yeah. we make terrible, we make changes that you don't agree with. So maybe you don't come <laughs> and that's where do we, we want you yeah. to. And yet you're still coming. <laughs> you're still going to come. And what so, do we have to do to make you not come? That's what we're trying to figure out. And I, I say it in jest, but I, I mean it in some true truth that there was a forward looking growth, getting people to theme parks, defining the theme park business, the birth of the theme park business, the building building and the attracting and what can this be to like we've hit critical mass we literally cannot have any more people come to this theme park it, it, even if we like do something people don't like and 30,000 people decide they're never going to come again we still that have will, too many people <laughs> we'll still it will yeah. just backflow yeah. with with water like you know and so i feel like i feel like they're not in that mode of thi- we've switched to a mode of thinking of how do we manage this massively popular platform yeah. versus how do we grow a theme park and one of the ideas I thought about that is like, you know, when does Disney open another theme park in California? Right. Like, when's like there, when's there a third gate? When there's a th- when is yeah. there a third gate? Like, why are we not having that conversation? Why are we having lightning lane conversations? And we're not having a theme parks have an inherent problem. They're on physical land. Lands have limits. You can't build anymore. So we need to be thinking about Disneyland Canada. A or, second or, story. Yeah, a second story. <laughs> underneath <laughs> right? or on top. I don't yeah. care which way you go. Disney basement. Disney basement. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I think the article is 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 starting off with that juxtaposition that before we were moving towards the growth of theme parks and the celebration of yeah. growing those and attract them. And now we're on the other side of how do we manage this thing that is so popular? You you can't make a bad decision. There's people, there's plenty right, of people lining right. up for bad decisions. Yeah. Like, so you're not going to go anymore, even though you can't actually go to the park, you buy a ticket and you're not allowed to go. And you're like, no, I'm still going. No, I'm still going to go. I'm, I'm gonna just, go. you just tell me when I can show up. <laughs> I'm just outraged, but I'm still going to go. Well, what if we tell you, you can't come right now? Yeah, that's good. That's, that's all right. Just let me know when I can come. So I don't know. That's, that's where I feel like we're at. And uh, you want, would you first respond to that? What do you, what do you think about the history of theme parks? Well, I think you're right. I mean, you know, I think it's interesting when we take a look at the history of Disneyland specifically and sort of where Disneyland was headed before Michael Eisner. Like it, it was a very sleepy experience from opening till about 1983, 84 ish, yeah. right? When Eisner took over and realized like the parks are losing money 
Nobody, it, it doesn't feel energetic. We're not drawing a lot of people here. We have enough people. Yeah. Right? That was sort of like the feeling like we have enough people yeah. to do this. And then Eisner really saw the opportunity that theme parks should be a moneymaker, should be a destination. And then you have the decade of Disney that, you know, was behind Eisner. Yeah. Really and, a mul- like a multi-channel genius. That yeah. And, and really like really created under his leadership what the theme park experience is like now. Yeah. Now, has he created this beast like that can't be, you know, that that's out of control? Like to a certain extent, yes. And it's, you know, I think about it and I think about how expensive it is to go to theme parks now and how, and the, and that price difference between when Eisner took over to what it is now. And, you know, I can remember even in my 20s where, like, going to the theme park for the day was, like, $65. Yeah, uh-huh. And that seemed expensive to me, but at the same time, it was $65. There's a lot of value in that $65. There's so much value, and you're like, and that was, like, in 2000. Yeah. That was, like, in the year 2000, 2001, was around 65 bucks, and now you're talking $125. And are you still getting $125 worth of value in your theme park experience? I think the answer is it depends on how many people are in the park with you at that time. Yeah. If you have a relatively easy experience of getting on the attractions you want to get on, eating at the place you want to eat and all those types of things, then $125 seems expensive. But for the experience that you're getting, you go like, okay, I think that makes sense. It does. I think that makes sense. percent yeah. It's certainly if you're paying $65 for that, you are stealing the experience, you know? So as much as I bristle at the over $100 to enter, um, you know, I can, I can see where you're getting that experience from. I agree with you that there is a capacity problem and that capacity problem can be solved by building a third gate. I'm surprised that there isn't more discussion. And I assume the reason why is because of the landlocked nature of Anaheim uh, and the inability. Now, maybe what that Disney, that Disneyland forward thing that we talked about a while ago, where they were saying, we're going to make overflow sections of California adventure in Disneyland. It is really hard for me to believe that they are not going to be building a third gate there. Yeah. It doesn't make sense that they're going to be expanding the two parks that they have, but because it just seems natural that if you're going to be going on the other side of magic drive or wherever it was magic way that you would just go like, it's going to be another theme park and we're going to have different lands and that sort of thing. It's not going to be part of the $125 experience you get in order to get into DCA or Disneyland. It's going to be its own $125 experience with its own. And that should take care of some of that capacity. Yeah. I think, but I don't know how you solve that. I mean, I know how I you know solve either. it in Florida in Florida, you just keep opening up other lands and you keep opening up other gates or more water parks or more yeah, oh, downtown Disney. Lots things. of land like, and lots of different things people want to yeah. do. Yeah, but for a place like Anaheim, like I don't know how you solve it unless That's you That's why I was thinking Disneyland Redding. Yeah. 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 Bring well, a little- you do that. Uh, uh, you do the the, the uh, ski resort that that Walt wanted to open. Mineral yeah. Springs. You do Mineral yeah. Springs. Yeah, Mineral Springs up on Shasta. Yeah. Pull, pull all those people, pull all those people out of Southern California. I mean, do I mean, truly though, like, do you consider building a third Disney park in the U S that That's is what not in California? Like, yeah. You know, or not in Florida. You, I was you trying to make at, sense of a Portland, Seattle, like a Pacific Northwest theme park, just cause yeah. I want to keep it on the West coast so I can drive to no, it. No, no, you can't. No, you got to put it in central. You got to put it in central. Yeah. It's, uh, they're they're the missing US. flyover country. Yeah. I mean, like, do you throw it in like a San Antonio, yeah. something like that, where, you know, you, you have pretty decent weather right. throughout the year and, uh, yeah, and you I'm know, still you're, fine you're with that. Drawn. Yeah. Uh, so let's go through these points real quick and we'll do them real quickly. Cause one of the problems, uh, is that there's too many upcharges. Agreed. Uh, and so I think we're all familiar with what the upcharges are. Let me ask you this. Yeah. What is an upcharge you've paid for in the park that you've, you've felt good about? Max pass. Yeah. Disneyland's max pass was an upcharge that was twenty twenty five dollars at the time, and it was like I will never tour without buying Max Pass. Yeah, because of the convenience of being able to make Fast Pass reservations and across multiple parks and those types of things, that was an upcharge that I'd be happy to pay again. And we sort of get that in Genie Plus right now. Yeah, with with one big caveat, but yes, you do. Right. Um, I think that the 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 main point of that particular point was that you you should be able to be upcharged and pay for. Um, add on experiences, but not core entertainment. Um, so you should not, there should not be an upcharge for a ride. That was part of your admission. And if you're saying like, well, you can just write it better. It's like, well, I really can't write it at all unless I purchase yeah. this. That that's not fair. But things like dining experiences, things like maybe special seating when there's still plenty of other seating or viewing opportunities, things like a, a Mickey's, you know, not so scary, that those are sensible upcharges. The things that are not simple, sensible upcharges are, 
uh, this you paid admission to do this thing. It's so crowded. We're going to create a way for you to pay more to actually experience it. That that's not fair. Well, let me, let me ask you a question about that. Yeah. If Genie Plus now we had Max Pass and Walt Disney World did not have anything like that. Yeah. So the idea of being able to pay in order to make Fast Pass reservations on your phone is a thing that we were used to over Disneyland, but Walt Disney World fans were not used to that because they had the Magic Bands and then my Disney experience. Yeah. Right. So let me ask you if if Genie Plus had been introduced, the exact same thing with the fifteen dollars at Walt Disney World, the twenty dollars at Disneyland, mm-hmm. but you were able to make reservations for web slingers uh rise, rise of the resistance right uh in walt yeah. disney world it's flight of passage the avatar flight of passage yeah. if those were included in the price of your disney plus do you think anybody would have a problem with this no i think that that's a even with some modifications to how many you could do and how the timing worked on and stuff like that which i've heard there, there are some little differences on it i think that's that's a fine a fine thing i think the big complaint is that that lightning lane plus right several line, several rides were excluded from that experience. Yeah, and I think that's the bridge too far for Disney fans, yeah. is that like, okay, I don't mind paying for this upcharge because I understand there is and I was convenience already paying, in Yeah, that. I was already paying it yeah. for Max Pass. And there is, well, and again, like I think about our Walt Disney World friends that like they've never experienced that, but even that at 15 bucks, 20 bucks, like I can see where that that passes the smell test. It's the like, it is a change because you were able to get Fast Passes for, for free. free. Right. Now, now they're saying we're taking that away, but you can make a Fast Pass for anything that you want via your phone for this $25, $20 upcharge. I don't even care what it is. That feels like, all right, that's a change. I'm willing willing to accept that. Yeah. Like that is an upcharge, but you know, okay, I'm willing to personally, I was never not paying that anyways. And that's a very selfish way of looking, but there you go. Well, but the idea of now paying 15 bucks, nine to 15 bucks, whatever it is for a ride reservation for these triple E ticket rides. Yeah. Like, that's where I just feel like fans are justified. Guests are justified in being furious about this because they're being told, oh, it only costs $125 to get into the park. But if you really want to to experience the park, you're going to be spending, you know, extra for all that. And again, when you're talking about a family of four, family of five, like that becomes effectively another day at the park in a lot of ways. Point two was very related to the first one, so we won't spend much time here, that... uh, there is now an, an attitude of nickel and diming from the Disney company in relation to their theme parks versus an, the all inclusive nature. This is not lightning lane stuff. This is things like, you know, things that were included for free. Uh, I don't remember some of those things were, I guess, a magic band um, and that kind of stuff that I guess the elimination of fast pass maybe is included in there. Right. Um, but just the fact that uh, I think their point is that uh, a, a Disneyland ticket has never been more expensive and you've never gotten less for that, that, uh, that expense. Right. I, I, I the, would what they call wholeheartedly de- agree. Devaluation with of your Disneyland admission cost. It's being devalued based on what you get for it. Now. Yeah. And again, sort of going back to what we talked about originally, like if you're going to pay $125, what is that? Is that price worth it? And the answer is it depends. And part of the things that it depends on is, again, is the experience. And if you are being expected to, you know, be paid to, to be nickel and dimed for upcharges or, really the reduction in services, products, experiences, et cetera, then you feel like your dollar is not, I mean, we're all experiencing inflation in life right now. We're, we all are experiencing the feeling that our dollar is not going far enough. Right. And, you know, I think we really feel that it, in the current Disney experience of, well, I was paying for this thing, but now I'm not getting parades. I'm not getting fireworks. I'm yeah. not getting nighttime spectaculars. Those things are coming back, but yeah. we've had a year now or around a year now where it's like, well, Disney has taken a lot away and they haven't they haven't changed the price of any of that. And in some cases, they've increased the price. Yeah. Of um, the third on the list, we'll just blaze past this one is pass holder problems. We've talked about it on the show. The major complaint about the pass holder problems is uh, what guests had and what they have now. Yeah. You can still get an annual pass, uh, but it's not a show up whenever you want. You have to you know, make a reservation and, and there's, there's less flexibility and more scheduling that goes with your fast pass. And, uh, that's just a change. This is where I don't have a problem yeah. because you know, the We're managing a beast, as you said earlier, and that's right. This is where, you know, annual pass holders, especially when it comes to Disneyland, there is, has been a very entitled nature for a lot of annual pass holders. Certainly none of our listeners, none, none of our listeners or me when I was certainly not you. Yeah. But there is a lot of, hey, I'm an annual pass holder, so therefore I'm entitled to more. 
Uh, and part of that entitled to more is I should be able to access the park whenever I want for as long as I want. And it, and my experience should not be affected by anybody else. Yeah. And I, and I think it's, I really do think it's a reasonable trade off to say like, yeah, you're going to have an annual pass depending on the tier that you buy, you will have access to the park. Uh, and what we are trying to do is again, trying to manage the capacity in the park so that everybody who is coming, who has paid money to be here, whether or not you're paying it for an annual pass or a day pass, they are having a, maybe not an equivalent experience, but a reasonable experience for the amount of money that they're paying. All right, I'm gonna do the last one. Ready? This one's hard. Yeah. And is the heavy handed use of IPs, intellectual properties. Uh, I think the, the the sort of complaint or the sort of acknowledgement of this is that Disneyland, Disneyland and the theme parks used to be a place for original imagination, yep. original IP. Uh, it was the Imagineer's job to come up with stories that weren't related to a movie and, and to put those into place. Uh, and now it feels as though IP is just being shoehorned in as much as it can. Fireworks, spectaculars, play things are, are filled with very recognizable IP. And so once you get a character, once you get the Mandalorian, and he's going to Grogu and there's just going to be everywhere. Yeah. There's the Grogu fireworks show, the Grogu parade, the hat. Uh, and so there's, there is that. And I think the solution the to Grogu this. The Grogu egg experience. The Grogu you egg, have, yeah. You can have as many eggs as you want. As many, well, that's a different lane. <laughs> you, get, you get three. Yeah. And if you want it, you want more than that. So I, I, I think that there's, there's uh, a validity to that. I think there's an un, there's an unsaid thing here is that the, the character, there's a heaven handed use of the IP and there's not. There's not any store additional story that's being developed oh gosh, with it. Yes. There's just a like, you know what these guys look like. And so I don't mind the heavy handed use of IP if it were like there were like if they were just going, it's the year of Buzz Lightyear. We're creating original stories like I'm like, that's cool. I don't know if it's smart, but it is cool. Um, but I think the much larger problem, the much harder thing to solve is like it's a really risky time to be creative, I think, right yeah. now. Yeah. You tell an Imagineer is like we're not going to go off a movie that's been like focus grouped and tested and creating something originally original right now, which is what Disneyland did a lot of is very it's very difficult. If you make a mistake, you're going to get there's going to be lots of uh, eyes pointed at that mistake. It's a really tough time to be creative. Yeah. And I think, you know. The injection of intellectual property into Disney parks is something that is as old as the parks themselves, yeah. right? There, there's you look around Fantasyland, and Fantasyland is built around existing IP that was, you know, the Disney uh, developed ride shows and attractions from. Yeah, and but then there was also the integration of other themed creative. Yeah. ride shows and attractions that were not based on IP and you had a beautiful marriage of the two. Yeah. So I think that there absolutely should be continued use of IP in the parks, but I think judiciously and I think where it makes sense, yeah. like I think the most egregious, uh, don't say Johnny Depp. Example. Don't, don't you say Johnny Depp? No, I won't. I wasn't going to say Good. it, but it's not a bad example. Johnny Depp and the Pirates of the Caribbean is pretty egregious, but even more so is, they're just about to open Guardians of the Galaxy in Epcot, right? Mm. They have a Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster in Epcot. Epcot, a park that was originally built without any characters whatsoever, yeah. with the exception of Figment. And Figment was going to be the only character that was in Epcot because Epcot was this place of exploration and education and learning about our world and learning about technology. Not a commercial. And it wasn't a commercial. Yeah. And Epcot has very much changed over the past decade to being incredibly IP driven, yeah. where we're just going to shove whatever IP that seems to make sense in this idea yeah. of the experimental prototype community tomorrow. And so we're going to have Frozen and Ratatouille and we're going to have Beauty and the Beast and all those things. And and even in those lands, even in the world showcase where those IPs are really starting to pop up or have been popping up, I'm even more accepting of that because I say like, okay, well, that's those characters are representative of the lands that are represented in the world showcase. But when you put Guardians of the Galaxy in Future World, it just feels like oh, we're just shoehorning a yeah. science fiction property into a land that really doesn't need a science fiction property in it. And that's where I'm like, okay, I get it. I get that what you are doing is hitting the easy button because rather than creating something that requires a guest to learn what a story is as they are in the queue and then experience that story throughout the ride and then remember that story once they get done, rather than doing that and trying to be creative in how you attack that, uh, approach that, all you're doing is hitting the easy button by saying, you know who the Guardians of the Galaxy are right, and we're like going to send them. you on a ride. You yeah. like them and now go borrow merchandise. And I, I, I like that really... It, that does make me sad mm -hmm. because of the creative intellect 
and genius that these Imagineers are, and genius, they are yeah. they are not being able to express themselves creative and creatively as. Uh, as wide as they could if they were allowed to let their imaginations run wild, as opposed to saying like, hey, you need to buy a uh, build a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. So yeah. be creative about that. And they can do that, but that's just not what they do. Right. Like if you just, I, I look at that space restaurant, Space 20. Yeah, Space U20. And you're just like, that is dope. Like, yeah, and that feels like that is old Epcot. Like yeah. that's what Epcot that should be. so cool. I mean, yeah. If you announce that like, oh, we have a new movie and so we've changed all the screens in there to like show scenes from that movie, you know, I'd be like, don't do that. Right. Like we, we like it, the, when my vacation... Like I get media shoved down me all the not, not literally, but I watch a lot of media. Yeah. Like Disneyland was the one place where it was about exploration and all that kind of stuff. If I go there and it just starts feeling like a commercial, that's a bummer. Yeah. Or do both, but have it make sense. Like, yeah. you know, again, have your space 220 and, but maybe you don't have Guardians of the Galaxy in the same space because yeah. maybe it just doesn't make sense in Epcot. Yeah. It, you know, maybe put it somewhere else or put it in the Hollywood studios where it's about movies and things like that. You already have Star Wars there. Like, yeah. So that was the article. It was a uh, really well written and had a lot of, uh, I think, reasonable, reasonable, uh, com- you know, reasonable things they were addressing and some good solutions to that. Which was both, you know, a lot of what you said, like beef up Imagineering. Let those guys do what they do. Let those guys and flex let those, those let muscles. Those, let those let those Imagineering muscles flex. Let's see those. Let's see those Imagineers just uh, put a couple plates up. How many plates you put up, bro? Plates. That's what I say. Oh yeah, these are like imagination plates, but like bench pressing. Yeah, but you're bench pressing imagination yeah, with plates. their brain. Yeah, how many um, brain plates you putting up? Yeah, bro, you um, even lift? That's what I said. That's what uh, imagination. That's, that's what exactly they say what it sounds m- like. There, yeah, yeah, bro, you, you even lift? You even lift? Yeah. Well, listen, that was a good discussion. It was fun. Sometimes I feel like a crotchety old man, where I'm like, eh, Disneyland's not the way it should be. But I don't think I'm alone in saying that sometimes. Yeah, I think the heart behind it is what you're trying to get at through that crotchetiness. Like the voice comes off a little bit like, hey, it's still pretty great. It's great. They're doing great stuff, which they are. But uh, there's a heart. There's a heart to it that somebody's got to stand up and protect. Maybe that's not bobsleds, but throw my hat in the ring is just like, hey, I care. I think for as long as fans are able to be vocal about this and say, like, we want something better from the experience that we're getting. uh, That's good. I don't think it will change until it translates into I'm not going to the theme parks. Right. And like, I, there's not like a not like a mass of people that are that are yeah, and I think f- there are a lot. But there's not a massive amount of people that are familiar with that heartbeat and the origins or right. interested in the history. They they want to go on rides and they want to see Gardens of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so those things are always in in struggle or in conflict with each other of, you know, of people that are more like, "Hey, remember when it was about this and it was about exploring and education and entertainment and all together?" And people are like, "I remember when I remember when it was a, when Marvel came. It was awesome." Yeah. I was like, "That's cool." I and I think, you know, we've been talking about this about the the direction of leadership. Like, I think it goes back to the thing that we have been pounding a drum for, which is saying like we want a folksy leader, we want a Walt like leader, or even an Eisner dreamer. Yeah, that is able to balance those two things. Yes. Hey, listen, we have really valuable intellectual property that is uh, ingrained in people's minds. That is a surefire hit for us, and they want to come see, and they want to come see, and we're going to give them that opportunity. But at the same time, we are the most creative company that's ever been in existence. Yes. And so we want to be able to empower our creatives to be able to think and dream in the ways that the the founder of this company thought and dreamed. Totally. And I think being able to balance those two is really, really necessary. And I just don't think we've seen that. We haven't seen that in Iger because Iger was all about acquisition yeah. and buying property. And did a great job. And did a great job. And we haven't seen that in Chapek because Chapek is all about monetizing that IP yeah. that was purchased. And so you go on Web Slingers and you're like, is this awesome? Yeah, it's awesome. And you look at the gift shop that's next to it and the spider things that they have in there by and you go, could this, but could this on a good day exist at, you know, one of the Midwestern theme parks or it's Six Flags. Yeah. And you're like, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. yeah, you could. This, this, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And there was something unique about Disney, like wholly unique about Disney. And I think you and I try to not stand crotchety but to say uh it it's really easy to make a neat uh, attraction on something it's really hard to make a disney attraction there's just a whole different level and let's let's get back to some of that level and maybe they are maybe the quinjet's the answer maybe maybe the big pretzel wasn't the answer i wish the big pretzel was the, I answer. Wish the big pretzel was the answer too the french toast wasn't the answer that's it my was okay. favorite thing at avengers campus is that big pretzel yeah but i haven't experienced it yet yeah yeah what else well, what else, Aaron, is that's the oh. end of the show. Oh, man, it came to an abrupt end. It sure did. It was just like over. Well, it's, we have good conversation, but all good conversations have to come to an end at some point. Until next week. And until next week, we will... Continue the good conversations. That's right. Yeah, it'll be fun. 
Uh, next week, let's talk about next week. Okay, it's going to be a big episode. It's going to be a big episode because we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Star Wars Special Editions. Okay, which came out right about now. Right, right around now. Yeah, awesome. At the last week of January. Next yeah. week, we're going to talk about what that experience was like. Yes, and uh, where Star Wars was before that, what that experience is, was like when the special editions came out, and how that changed the trajectory of Star Wars fandom, I would say forever. Oh, definitely forever. Are we going to do like uh, favorite favorite edits and edits they shouldn't have made? Oh my gosh, why shouldn't we? Yeah, good. Yeah, we, no, we're going to go into uh, painstaking detail of every single edit Black that was hole made. level detail. Yep, every edit was made, every color correction that was made. Yeah. And we're going to offer critique. We're not going to do I, that. I like, I like watching them side by side because you look at the original and you go like, it's a little it's a little fuzzy, it's a little, but it, man, it looked dope. Even 77, oh gosh, it looked so amazing. I ah, love it. I love it. Anyways, that's next it's week. It's coming up. That This has been this week. Mm-hmm. And this has been Bob's Banthas. Yay! And we release every week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Facebook. Oh! Wherever you listen to podcasts. And we can also be heard on the Magic of the Mouse radio every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You can check out Magic of the Mouse radio for the best Disney music and podcast 24-7 by visiting www.wdisby.com mm-hmm. or Bob's and Banthas forward slash radio. Radio. Just go to Do you like radio. how I do that? Yeah. I was trying to get like a... You yeah, undersold it a lot. Did I? Yeah. Do you want to oversell it? Bobsledsandmanthas.com forward slash radio. Oh, that's good. I like that. Okay. Hey, we would love it if you followed us on Apple Podcasts or mm-hmm. Spotify. We would love it even more if you left us a five star on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And we would love it even more if you left us a written review on Apple Podcasts. Written review would be great. Let's have a let's have a heart to heart here, guys. Let's let's hear. Let's hear what you think. Yeah. I not, need, not too harsh. <laughs> we're a little we're fragile right now. Kudos Look, only. I got a lot of stuff on my plate. Okay, hey, come we're, trying, with, we're doing, doing the best we can right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we're all just, and I just you know, want you to acknowledge it. I know the bolts your... are loose. I can't right now. I can't tighten them. We're doing the best we can. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, written review would be great. Yeah, it, it lets us know what you like about the show. It lets other people find out about the show, and it really helps. It really helps people discover this thing called Bob's and Samantha's. You can visit us at bobsandbanthas.com. You can email us, podcast at bobsandbanthas.com, scott at bobsandbanthas.com. Yeah, he checks Aaron it once at a week. I check it once every four months. Uh, you can also support us, patreon.com forward slash bobsandbanthas. Man, if you want to hear about pinballing, yeah. you want to hear about uh, Aaron's and my crazy ideas for the things that we would like to do for this channel and elsewhere, Uh huh. patreon.com. Lots of, lots of good stuff. And more good stuff coming. That's right. Good yeah. stuff is coming. We're getting coming. back into the Patreon swing, I feel. It's going to be great. Yeah. Tpublic.com is where you can wear us and you can join all the Bantha tiers for the more for the more fun. There is fun that we have at T Public. <laughs> and then there's the more and fun. And then the more fun is over at Instagram. Uh, named after of course. It's where we do a lot of history on the Moors. That's right. That's right. Uh and uh, medieval England. <laughs> medieval England. It's, it's uh, our Moors podcast. It's, uh, it's called The More Fun. The More Fun. Uh you can look for that coming up. Not to be confused with the more fun, which is uh it's our fundraising effort to just bring awareness. Oh, I thought you were talking about the more fund where we uh, we fund people morphing into different things. Oh, the more fund. Yeah, the yeah more of fund. course. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you can join all the Bantha tiers uh, on Instagram. We're at Bob's and Banthas. And until next week, he's been Aaron. How do you do? And I've been Scott Duty Hay. Yeah, hey. And we've been Bob's and Banthas. We'll see you next week. Nice to see you next week. It's growing every day. This Saturday night. Now there are more new rides for more fun. Synthomagnetic musical sound. Through the magic of light and sound. Yes, there's more fun at Disneyland in Anaheim. Open every day, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done.